Hello everyone, my name is Emily Traster and I am here today with Dan Dalton, one of the founders of the law firm Dalton & Tomich. Dan has helped a number of churches leave the United Methodist denomination and keep their property. Thank you for joining me today, Dan. It's good to see you, Emily. Good to see you as well. How do church leaders define who a member is within a local Methodist church and how can they clean up a membership list prior to voting on disaffiliation? It's a great question and it's one uh, many of our clients ask us. <clears throat> a lot of times uh, local churches just don't audit their membership roles. Uh, even though it's required under the Book of Discipline uh, to be audited every year, uh, it really is a question that people don't think about until the vote of disaffiliation because they really need to find out who is a member and who can vote on that particular issue. Well, the Book of Discipline answers that question starting in section 223. And really there's four ways of uh, finding this matter out. The first is, the easiest way is, is, is a member, uh, have they withdrawn? Have they sent a letter in to the pastor and to the leadership team indicated that they're leaving? You know, most people don't do that. Most people just leave a church and kind of don't say anything to anybody, um, but some do. And if there's that letter has been sent, uh, that notice of withdrawal is effective immediately. Another way, of course, is through death. If uh, somebody dies and you kind of go through the role and their name is still on there, we could remove that. Uh, another way is uh, if the individual uh, under the Book of Discipline uh, goes ahead and uh, uh, Trans, uh, transfers to another church. Uh, you know, they leave town and they're off to another uh, United Methodist Church or another church uh, wherever they live to. But in the most case you're going to find is, is a lot of people just don't say anything. They just leave, like I said before. And uh, the, the question is, is, are they still a member? Well, under the Book of Discipline, if they're not around for eight years, eight years, then you could automatically with, with draw their name from the membership role. And that's under section 223 of the Book of Discipline. Another way of looking at it is if within two years, if they don't attend church, uh, and you, you do some sort of uh, outreach to them, whether you call them, send an email, send a letter saying, are you still interested in joining this church or being a part of it? And there's no response, the charge conference can then vote and remove them from the membership list. So that's another way of doing it. Another way is uh, through a church trial. The district superintendent under section 2714 of the Book of Discipline uh, can go through and if somebody is violating the Book of Discipline, they can do a church trial. Hardly ever happens, but, but it could go through that way. But really the ones you're gonna to wanna to look at is, is uh, auditing your role, see if somebody has transferred, withdrawn, or has died. Um, they're automatically out that way. If it's eight years they haven't been around, they're automatically out. Uh, but the, the big one that you want to focus on is, is the two years. If you haven't seen them in two years, you've tried outreach and they haven't responded, you can then vote at your charge conference to remove them. And why is this important? The reason it's important is, is because you want to know who's voting on the issue before you disaffiliate. A lot of times in smaller churches in particular, what we've seen is, is people who have just left the church, they're still on the church role, uh, they don't normally attend. Uh, a vote of disaffiliation occurs, and, and the conference will then reach out to those individuals. Those individuals who you haven't seen in years will, will still come and they'll vote because they're still in the membership role, and disaffiliation will fail or it'll, it'll become problematic. So whatever you do uh, before you start that disaffiliation voter process, one of the first things you should really think about is cleaning up your membership list and your membership roles. As always, thank you, Dan, for your insight. And if you're watching this video and you have any questions or if we could be of any service to you, please feel free to give our office a call or email us today.